It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to portray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped round him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. It's Maundy Thursday. It's that day when we remember that Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. And we are called to go and do likewise. We're called to live our lives as a sacrifice in response to the breaking of Jesus's body and the pouring out of his lifeblood, which happened so that we might have life without end with God in heaven. So introducing others to Jesus is our greatest goal to snatch others from the jaws of hell is our delight. Our model is Jesus. He, in obedience to his Father's will, allowed his body to be broken and his life force, his blood, to be poured out for us. In dying, he took on him the iniquity of us all. In dying, he showed God's love for us, in this, Christ Jesus died on a cross. Not just that he died, but he died on the cross, a most painful, torturous means of death known to the Roman world. His death then brought us life. So when we live, we are called to live for him. Now also on this night, Jesus got up from the table, found himself a towel and a bowl of water, and as we've heard, he set out to wash the disciples' feet. He knew full well that this was the job of the most lowly servant, and yet it was not beneath him to take on that role. In taking on that role, Jesus took on the most humble of roles possible, thus demonstrating to us our calling to service 
in our response to God's love for us. Whilst this act brought physical cleanliness to those present, clearly we could choose to see a spiritual reality in that physical activity of cleansing. What I mean by that is that from that meal, so Jesus went to Gethsemane, he was arrested, tried, crucified, and on the third day resurrected. His death brought cleansing for us. Think for a minute, a moment about the, the images used around th that we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. So the washing away of the dirt of life from the feet of his disciples on Maundy Thursday, we could say foreshadowed the washing away of the spiritual dirt of our sins on Good Friday. Maybe that puts Jesus' response to Peter, verse 8, into context. So Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part in me. So will you allow yourself to be washed clean by Jesus? The alternative is to attempt to clean yourself up, but that's like trying to wash with a sponge soaked in honey. It just does not work. Or perhaps it's like Pilate trying to wash his hands at the end of Jesus's trial. It might be possible symbolically, but even so, Pilate's signature was still on Jesus's death warrant. So for Jesus, that cleansing rightly offered to us and accepted is amazing. Remember the psalmist put it this way, that as far as the east is from the west, that's how far God has removed our sins from us. So it's out of an appreciation of the hope, the meaning, the purpose that Jesus offers us as the benefits of his passion that we are called to love others. Famously, John 3.16 has it, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. If God loved the world that much, then who are we to hold out anger and hurt and crossness to the world? Now we are called to be witnesses to God's love in our own lives and to love, at least love each other, since that's what Jesus calls Christians to do in that passage. The passage we've just heard, a new commandment I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love each other. By this, everyone will know that you are my followers if you love one another. So on this most holy of nights, as we remember the Last Supper, the foot washing and the imminence of crucifixion, so we recognise the seriousness of the situation. Jesus was about to end his earthly ministry. He was about to die. But because we know the end of the story and because we know the spiritual meaning and the consequences of that action, so even in this most serious of nights, we can have confidence in our salvation. We can rejoice. Yes, because this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us be glad in it. Even whilst we watch and pray with Jesus. Or even whilst we sleep with the disciples. Even whilst tomorrow we weep with Mary and John at the foot of the cross. Even whilst tomorrow we recognise all those others that at that point understood Jesus' crucifixion as a tragic ending, a tragic cutting short, a dashing of hopes and dreams. 
especially for those who understood the Messiah as saving them in the here and now from the Roman rulers. Friends, we know the end point. We know how the story finishes and so we can rejoice in God's love for us, in the restoring of relationship with Jesus, with God, that was made possible by Jesus' death on the cross. So let us rejoice and be glad while we watch with the disciples, we must see all this as we look back, as it were, through the lens of the cross and we thank God for Jesus. Amen.